you guys. Anyone here? Hello, hello. I'm going to go live on Instagram too, just because I feel like it. Instagram story. Hey guys, so um, I want to talk to you today about what to expect during the holidays, but I'm going to, we're telling your followers that you started live. Okay, good. You do that. Um, so yeah, the holidays are upon us, and um, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about holidays and expectations, you know, what to expect and how to manage your expectations around the holidays because a lot of fallouts with family members happens right around the holidays, as you know. And the reason being is because we expect the holidays to be so perfect. We expect everything about the holidays to be perfect, and when they're not perfect, we get upset. So as you know, my life work is committed to teaching people how to regulate their emotions and you know the holidays is a very emotional time what can I say so here's the thing you guys the, the, the conversation I want to have to you today is called when things fall apart let them when things fall apart let them okay um, a lot of reasons why things fall apart is because new things need to come together so old things have to fall apart before new things can come together and if you see me looking at both it's because I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook yes I'm, I'm multitasking um, so what happens is we start having these expectations because we crave perfection we crave the perfect meal we crave the perfect gifts we crave the perfect decorations everything needs to be perfect so we set our expectations so high that when our reality is not a match for our expectations we get really upset because unfulfilled expectations lead to upset that's just the way it goes so if you really want to avoid being upset in life I invite you to start managing your expectations and that's not to say that you can't have expectations of other people because I think it is good but it's to have these expectations without having an attachment to that expectation like be willing to be flexible I always think of a tree right the branch on a tree the tree that really lasts in the end is the one that can bend with the wind then there's the other tree that, you know, it's like it's got to be their way, its way or the highway. And that's the one that's always snapping and cracking and it just doesn't have much life or longevity to it. So I want to invite you to take on the holiday seasons. <laughs> I don't know I was going to say this, but take on the holiday like a branch on a tree, right? You want to have some flexibility. You want to be able to move with cer cer um, circumstances and situations. Just kind of like go with the flow. So that's just what I want to say just, just to get started. What I want to say after that is that the reason why we suffer so much when there's unfulfilled expectations is because we bring such resistance to it. We're resisting what's so. We're resisting the reality of life. And when you resist something, it's like imagine someone pulling you behind on a car. You're holding on to the car and you're like trying to stop it and you're just going to mess up your heels. Whereas if you just kind of surrender and go with the flow, you're going to go where you're going to go, but you're not going to be damaged when you get there. So we have to start giving up resistance. Um, Coleman, thank you. Okay, so does anyone have anything to say about that? We want to manage our expectations, right? Because unfulfilled expectations lead to upset. So if you don't want to get upset, stop expecting a lot and just get in a place of gratitude and be flexible. What shows up is what's perfect for you in that moment, in that time, even if it doesn't look like it. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that, okay? So, um, this is okay. So, any questions you guys before I go on? Because I want you to really understand that expectations that are unfulfilled leads to upset. And tis the season to be jolly, not upset. And it'll be easy to be upset if, you know, you're not getting what you want. Okay, so we're going to move on. So, if we can give up our expectations, we can avoid being upset. And then we can get in a place of being just surrendering and letting stuff happen the way it happens. Like, let people be who they are. People are going to show up and they're going to be whoever they are, however they are. And if you're not attached and you're not resisting Uncle Snook, who's going to be getting drunk because he always gets drunk, then you're not going to, Uncle Snook's not going to have any power over you. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, 
Suffering is the key to all resistance. That's the end of the story. If you can give up your expectations and learn not to suffer, or learn how to not suffer but just surrender, you'll be opening yourself up for a whole new reality in life. So the point of my conversation is when things fall apart, let them. Let them fall apart because life and situations and experiences, they all exist in a compartment. Think of a compartment, right? You know like boxes, like you have a grid. Each compartment has space for a certain situation or an experience. If things are falling apart in that particular situation or that particular experience, it's because there's something else that wants to be in that compartment. And so the more you hold on to it, the more you force an outcome, then the more you're resisting what the universe actually wants to put in that place. So you got to just chillax and let what needs to be expressed be expressed. You know, just move out of the way. Um, an example from my personal life is I was supposed to be doing something on Christmas. Wait, Sasha says, what about dealing with expectations? Oh, Sasha, I missed that question. Can you repeat it? I'll slow down. Um, so here's what happened to me on Thanksgiving. I was really attached to a certain thing happening, right? A certain experience being a certain way. And it started falling apart, like a week before Thanksgiving, maybe two weeks. And there was a part of me that wanted to resist that because I had expectations. Damn it, it was going to go the way I said it was going to go. And when I started to resist it, I started to suffer. I could feel myself suffering. I, was, I had angst. I was stressed out. I was being a reckless bitch. I felt it coming on. My cortisol surge was, you know, out of control. And then I had to check myself before I wrecked myself. And I just paused because, remember, responsible bitches respond. They ponder. Sasha, what an agreement on the situation should be, and it's upsetting because things are turning out. Okay, great, Sasha, that's what I'm talking about, right? So you have an idea of how it's supposed to be, and you have an expectation to that. Um, what that means is that you're attached, and if you're attached, you're going to get jacked up, you know? I'm not saying you can't be committed to it being a certain way, but you can't be attached if you want to go through life without being upset. If you want to be upset, be attached. If you want to have a different kind of experience in your reality, then just be committed. Like, I'm committed that it'd be great. I'm committed that this, my Thanksgiving turns out the way I thought I wanted it to turn out. But it did not turn out that way. And here's the thing. The way it did actually turn out, I can't imagine for the life of me how I could have had any other experience than the one I had. Seriously, I was blown away when I was doing what I was doing on Thanksgiving. I kept thinking, oh my God, had that other thing happened, I would never, ever be able to do this. So it was such a blessing. So my point is, when things fall apart, you guys, just get out of the way. Just let it. Just get in a state of gratitude. And as long as you're living a right life, you're living your life correct, you need to trust that the universe will always be conspiring on your behalf, okay? So, any questions about that? Uh, thanks, Leanne. I love you, too. Um, anything about that? Okay. So, here's the thing. Another example is that um, sometimes, especially if you're doing Christmas shopping, right? Right about now. You're going to find yourself getting agitated. Uh, I lose control, but only at home, always in control at work. Then, well, listen, you're not going to lose control at work. Someone said, how is it that I can keep it together outside of my house, and then when I'm at home, I lose it? That's kind of smart, right? Because you're not going to lose it outside of your home. We always lose it with the people we feel safe with and in the space that we feel safe. Um, but I invite you to look at how it is that you feel about yourself after you lose control, whether you're wherever you are, right? It really impacts your relationship with yourself to know that you can't keep it together. You can't keep your shit on lockdown. You got to get that whacked out about something, right? Like if you really look at that and look at your relationship to losing control, it's not even about whether you lose control at work or whether you lose control at home. It's about the fact that you lose control. Now here's the other thing. The illusion is that you have control because we really don't even have control, right? Like the world is going to show up the world the way the world is going to show up. I think that we can like meditate and think positive and we can cause certain things, but I also think some things are inevitable. So what if you surrender to the fact that you don't have any control? 
So then what would you lose if you have no control to start with? Your temper? That's what I want to talk to you about next because I actually think it's great to lose your temper. I really do. I think it's good to get pissed off, but we have to create a container to get pissed off in, a container that's safe so you don't experience yourself as being out of control. I don't know who said that, but I hope that computes for you. So here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about getting upset, getting angry. We don't give ourselves permission to be pissed off. You know, we, we think we have to have it all together and be sweet and be kind all the time. And that's just not reality, you guys. Sometimes we're going to get pissed off. But if you really want to be in control, as you're saying, you need to give yourself a space to be pissed off in. Like what do you, so if you're Christmas shopping, for example, right, and you find that you're getting agitated, a lot of people will start resisting that. How do I deal with the health aspect of this? I feel stuck. I try and be happy, tell myself I'm healthy, but I'm not, and I'm drowning in the process. You've got to be related to your reality. I'll come back to the agitation in a second. Um, Tisha, if you're really not well, you've got to be related to the reality. The truth of the matter is you're dealing with a health challenge. You can't resist that. Whatever you resist will persist. You know, so if you are dealing with a health challenge, you got to go, okay, this is my reality, and now this is what I am committed to. But if we don't even embrace the reality of what's there, we can't even begin to look and see what we're committed to because we're so busy resisting and remembering the suffering is in the resistance. So if you can really get present to the fact like, okay, this is my challenge. This is my health challenge. Now what? Then what? I tell them, but I'm drowning in the process. Well, you're drowning in the process because you're not breathing in reality, you know? You gotta really just, you know, I'm sorry that that's your experience. But remember, when things are falling apart, you have to let them. You can't resist them. You can't force an outcome. You can't have expectations that are not founded in reality. Because then you're gonna resist, and then you're gonna start persisting your resistance, and then you're gonna start struggling, and that's where the suffering is, okay? You really got to get clear about that. I love you too. Okay, so whatever you guys, whatever it is you're dealing with, write it down. Put it in reality. Get it out of your head. You can't change anything in your head. The only way we can alter anything is, is when we put it in reality. If we want to alter it in reality, we need to put it in reality. And then once we have it in reality on a piece of paper or something that's tangible that we can see, then we can create reality. Um, we can create actions that are also founded in reality that will make a difference for us in that particular area. Like sometimes I have clients and they have all these problems in their head. I'm like, well, how are you going to how are you going to transform those problems in your head? And they say, well, I'm going to just keep working on it in my head. And I was like, but but where is that going to ever get you? Like, get get it out, get it down, get it in the real world. Let's deal with it there. You think your husband's cheating? Okay, let's write it down. Now let's look at that. What are some definite actions that we can take either to confirm or, you know, rebuke that he's cheating? Like, let's get to the bottom of it. Be present to what is so. Because when things fall apart, you need to let them. But how you let them is by being responsible about their existence and your expectations of them in the real world. Oh, I'm glad you needed this today. I needed it too. I'm telling you, I'm so excited to be with you guys. We have no lights in Los Angeles. God, my heart goes out to everyone who's suffering from the, the fires. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see. Well, that, that light keeps going on and off. So and it's just been a weird experience. So I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to be live before everything goes down, goes dark. Okay. So I want to talk to you guys about the meltdown and why it's important to be related to your... Um, I'm just joining. What are we talking about? We're talking about when things fall apart, let them. Like how we need to get things out of our head, whatever's bothering us, stop pretending it's not bothering us, learn to manage our expectations about things that bother us. But mainly I want to emphasize the importance of whatever is there just being honest with yourself like this is how I feel okay today I'm agitated you know today I'm pissed off and then finding a way finding finding a way to take care of that agitation that's what I was telling you like if you're going Christmas shopping and you come home and you're pissed off 
you just, that means you had a cortisol surge. And that cortisol surge is a stress hormone. And for every five minutes that you are generating that stress hormone, it stays in your system for 12 hours. So if you feel that you're agitated, what do you do? How do you take care of yourself when you're agitated? Don't suppress it. Don't make yourself bad or wrong for being agitated or angry or pissed off. Just, you know what? I'm pissed off. What am I going to do about it? Because if you don't do something about what's there, and again, you suppress it, it's going to find a way to be expressed. And again, the suffering is in the resistance. Love it. I ended a relationship today. Good for you, I think. Yeah, I guess so. Awesome. Yeah, if it's not working, bye-bye. Goodbye. Um, so I was talking to you also about when things fall apart, let it because everything has a compartment. And in these compartments, there's like a vibrational frequency. So let's just say, okay, perfect. Um, you're in a relationship, glam, tam, tam, right? And that guy or girl is, that, that person occupies a frequency in your life called relationship. So if that is falling apart, you want it to fall apart because that means it's no longer a match energetically for you. So you want to fall, to fall apart so it can get out. And then that space, that compartment becomes a clearing for whoever's next to come into your life. You know, but I think of it like this. I know this is a horrible analogy. You guys just bear with me. But if you have one guy in your bed and that's not the dude for you. He needs to go because that spot, that space, it needs to be empty so someone else can plop into it, right? That's the best way I can explain it to you. When things are falling apart, let it because that means new things want to come together. Yes, great way to begin 2018. Awesome. Okay. Any questions, y'all, y'all? It's so much fun. I'm like on Facebook and I'm on... Instagram. I feel like I have two drinks in my hand. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk to you about, the reason why you want to let things fall apart so new things to come together can come together, is because when there's a crescendo of energy and it just gets, gets big, 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 it's almost like it gets to the point like it's either going to now find a new direction and you're going to create something new together or it's got to fall apart so that something else can come. I mean, that's how I got into doing my therapy. My, my acting career was just going crazy. It was just falling apart. I couldn't pay someone to hire me. And when finally I hit rock bottom, I was like, you know what? Energetically, I don't believe that this is what I'm supposed to be doing in the first place. I wasn't even being honest with myself. And that's when I went back to school. I went back to school at 42 to become a doctor. You know, I knew I had a long journey ahead of me, but I also knew that I had to let go of that so that I could create something new. What does that mean? Since you requested to be in your live video, I have no idea what that means. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah, it was huge. It was really huge. And thank God, thank God I let that happen because I'm, I'm happier than ever. And now I'm getting acting roles. Can you believe it? Like, I let go of that, that fell apart, so I build up my career, and I'm just now getting my doctorate, and now I'm getting acting gigs. Go figure, but that's how it happens sometimes. All right, so that's it. I just wanted to, you know, drop in. I do, it means another person can join the live. But, like, be live on screen with me? I don't even, why would I do that? I mean, who is this person? <laughs> It's so weird. Um, would they be live on screen with me or would they be live like chatting with us right now? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's it. I just wanted to like let you guys know if stuff falls apart this holiday season, let it get out of the way. Remember, 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 remember. Things fall apart so new things can come together. Get out of the way. The suffering is in the resistance. If you resist it, it will continue to persist. Be sad about it. Be angry. Be pissed. Allow yourself to have your emotions. Okay? Allow yourself to have those emotions. But don't, just don't live in this fantasy like it has to be perfect. Yes, it's the season to be jolly, but it doesn't have to be a perfect jolly season. It can just be whatever it is. And just say yes to what shows up. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, I love your possibility. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, S. Brandon. Yeah, take care of yourselves. And don't think that you have to always show up perfect either. In the same way I'm asking you not to expect that from other people, that's why I want you to embrace whatever's there for you. If you're agitated, you're sad, you're angry, just choose you as you are. And the other person was talking about losing control. You know, you really, there is no such thing as control. It's an illusion, you know. I really think it's just an illusion. Like, what can you control? Like, life shows up. Just continue to be the best human being that you can be. It's fine to be angry. The Bible states in Ephesians, be ye angry and sin not. All right, if you want to take it biblically, baby, I can go there with you too. Jesus was pissed off when he found out that they were gambling in the house of the Lord. He threw those tables down. Christ was like, I'm finna throw down up in here. Um, Y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. So yes, exactly. Thank you for the um, scripture to underscore what I'm saying. Choose you. That's it, boo. Just choose, choose you. Choose all of you for everything you are, everything you're not. Things fall apart. Let them. Don't resist. Surrender. Choose what's there. And then if you're not happy with what's there, once you put it in reality, then be committed to creating something else. But you can't create something else if you're ignoring what's already there because you can't put it in the compartment, remember? You got to get what's in the compartment and look at that and work with that and start dissolving that. And then you can start creating something else to put there. Yo, yo. All right, you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. I have so much fun with you. I will see you next Tuesday at 6.30. What time is it now? Yeah. I guess I'll stay on for four more minutes if anyone has anything to say. I promise I would stay on until 7. That's 8 minutes, but I can't even imagine what I would say for another 8 minutes unless you guys have a question. Questions, concerns. I have this one girl who is really having a challenge. She's staying with her brother-in-law. And, um, you know, when you're in someone else's house, you really have to kind of, you got to kind of take it, you know. You just kind of got to take it or you got to make different arrangements for yourself. Um, 20 year divorce, any tips, 20 years divorced, any tips on what? You want to hook up with someone? What's up? 20 year divorce, do you want to be divorced? Obviously not, I don't know. Or you can't find someone? I believe there's someone for everyone. If you're 20 years divorced, oh, thank you, Mary. Oh, I love Mary. Wow. Mary and I used to eat salads together at grad school. Oh, Mary, good to hear from you. Thank you. Coping. Coping. I don't understand, Mark Anderson. you got to break it down for me a little more. I know you just divorced after 20 years of marriage. Well, first of all, congratulations. I've never done anything for 20 years, so that's awesome. Um, that's huge. I hope that you've stopped and you've acknowledged yourself for that, right? Hey, Judy. Mwah. Good. Thank you. So seriously, Mark, go. did you acknowledge yourself for the 20 years that you were able to be in a committed relationship with someone? That's a big deal, especially in this time and age. So, you know, and as, as far as your coping is concerned, I'll tell you what, you send me a, a private message and I'll send you my book called uh, How to Be X-Free, Nine Keys to Happiness After Heartbreak. And that really does make a difference. You're, you're going to be challenged, but here's the thing. Get that, get that you're upset. Get that you're angry. Be with where you are. Ride the horse in the direction it's going. If you're sad, be sad. If you're happy, be happy. If you're depressed, where, wherever you are. Um, and then be committed to doing something about it. And that commitment could look like something like reading this book that I wrote. And I'm not just saying it because I wrote it. I know for sure that it makes a difference. I use it on myself. I go back and use those nine keys sometimes. Um, when I feel challenged, although I haven't felt challenged for a while. That's a whole other story in that arena. Okay, Mark, so send me, please, send me um, some information on how to reach you. I was with my guy for 12 years. He was a father to my son, left me and my son too. Now what? Okay, so he left you and your son. Hmm, that's interesting. I would need a little more information, but I'll tell you what, you have to choose what you have. And what you have now is a single life with your son. 
So I don't think we can do much about him, but I think what we can do is look at how we're going to create you to be someone who can deal with that shit and be like, okay, you know what? He's the jerk. I still got my boy. I still got myself, and I'm holding it down for us. Like, that's where you really need to look. So the now what is who are you going to be for you and your boy if you really want to break it down? Because that's what it's about. He's gone. Oh, thank you, Gerald. Um, someone else said something that I missed. Oh, you love the book? Thank you. Yes, you guys, by the... Is that my... It's Tamara, my makeup artist. Oh, my God. Why do you say former makeup artist? You're my current makeup artist. I just haven't been wearing any makeup yet, girl. I haven't had anywhere to go. Um, and then someone said, what do I want to do for Christmas? What do I want... Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have an amazing Christmas. I've got big plans. Big, big plans. Um, uh, yeah. I love the book. Thank you. Here's my new book, you guys. Shameless Promotion. How to be a responsible bitch. I almost forgot. Thank you, Tisha. Um, this book is one of the best things I've done for myself. And it's a long story short. Um, I used to have a really bad anger problem. Like, really, really bad. Uh, I think it's just growing up in foster care and living in all those detention homes and stuff. I was just always very angry. That was my defense mechanism. And because I was so tiny, I had to, like, have a big roar. And then... I actually got a bigger bite, right? So I was like very violent and very angry and it got me in a lot of trouble. I actually got arrested for beating my boyfriend up. And um, I know, right? Can you imagine that? And then I think about it, I'm like, wow. But it's great. Things were falling apart and I had to let them. And what I got out of that is I end up having to do 52 weeks of anger management. And now I teach the very class that the judge assigned me to attend. So how amazing is that? And this is what I wrote the book about, how to be a responsible bitch, as opposed to being a reckless bitch. And it's about how to manage your anger and how to really, you know, hold it, hold it together. Keep yourself together when stuff, you know, is falling apart. You just get to go, okay, got it. I'm good. I'm good. No, you go do that. I'm going to sit here and breathe through my heart and stay cool. Oh, hey, Lori, my Idaho buddy. Thank you. I think I just saw Jossie. Hey, Jossie, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm sorry I didn't get to hit you up on Facebook. I was doing papers all day on your birthday. And thank you. You're an amazing man. Only because I've been doing your makeup for so long. So, oh, it's cute. I know, right? <laughs> but I'm coming back, baby. I'm coming to get you. I'm getting, I've got some really great things I'm going to be announcing next week. So I'll, I'll meet a makeup artist. And you are fabulous. Okay, I think that's it. This has been so much fun, you guys. Um, the one lady who was talking about her husband left her and her son. Listen, I hope, I don't want to come across as not having any compassion, any compassion for what you're dealing with. It's just you have two choices. You're going to either be a victim or you're going to be a victor. And when you are a victim, them, it's like this is what someone did to me and yeah I'm not saying that's not true but there's no power for you there so you got to be a victor and be like this is what was done to me and I've got a cape and an S on my chest and I'm gonna kick some ass because I'm unstoppable so that's all I'm trying to get 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 you to do there okay uh, thanks glam tam tam please hit me okay anything else Yes, yes what, Steve? Yes what? I can't believe my lights haven't gone off. This is a uh, divine intervention. All right, you guys, um, that's it. Thank you for your time and your attention. I always have so much fun with you, and I'll be back next Tuesday. And if you have any questions, always PM me. I, I love hearing from you guys. And, um, you know, focus on, you want, on what you want. Yeah, that's good. And... Don't focus on what you don't want. How about that? That's another thing. Because wherever your attention goes, your intention flows. And intention is what manifests things, you know? Okay. Oh, thank you, Tayanda. I feel rude, like, hanging up. I always like other people will hang up first, you know? No, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> All right, you guys. Mwah. God bless you, Godspeed, choose you wherever you are, be with that, and um, yeah, 
just just be with where you are and if things fall apart let them it's all good all right